Hi there and welcome to today's video. In today's video we will build a React app that can translate English to Yoda. And Yoda of course is the character from Star Wars. And if you didn't notice, I used the Star Wars playing cards from Theory 11 in that intro, which I thought would be fitting considering the application we are creating. A few words about the application before we get to coding. So first of all, we will use a REST API for translating the English text to Yoda. And the API is a public API, which means that we don't need any authentication in order to use it. We can just send the English text to the API and we get the translation as a response. Then we'll create a React app with Create React App for making the API request and then showing the response for the user. So this is also a great simple exercise on how to use a REST API with React. I should also mention that if you want to learn more about React, I have my React Basics course up on Skillshare. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you are new to Skillshare, you actually get a free trial, which means that you also get my course for free. So it costs you nothing. But now let's switch to the computer and let's get the coding. Okay, let's start by initializing the project with create React app. That's the one we will be using on this application. Like this and I will let it run. And once it's finished, let's open up the project in Visual Studio Code. And to test that everything is okay, let's write npm start and see that the application starts up. Yeah, we get the default application, so everything is okay. Let's start by removing everything from the app component and let's start fresh. So first I'll import React from React. Then I'll create a functional component and let's export it as default. I'll save it and refresh the browser and we can see that we got some text. Okay, so let's first build the user interface for the component or the application. And once we have our UI ready, we'll take a look at the API and how to make the API call and display the data we get back from the API. So now let's write some user interface code. Now we have the basic markup ready for our component. So let's save this and see it in the browser. As we talked about earlier, we will have text input where we will type the text we want to translate and then a translate button that will actually make the API request. And then here we will have the translation that we get back from the API. Right now this looks pretty rough. so. Let's add some styles to make this a bit nicer. So I'll add this style variable that holds uh, different styles for different parts of the application. And now we still need to add this styles to the actual HTML elements by passing them as a style attribute. So let's do that now. Now that we have passed the styles as style attribute for each HTML element, let's save this and check it out in the browser. And now we can see that the styles are applied and the application looks a lot nicer. Uh, I can see that the text for the translation doesn't have any styles. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like I forgot to define the text object inside the styles variable. So let's do that quickly now. Okay, 
like this. Let's save it and check the browser. And now we can see that the translation text is also styled. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually make this text input a controlled input, which means that we will define its value and also an onclick handler for it. So let's add those right now. I will be using hooks for the state management for this component because our component is functional and hooks are the way to add state to a functional component. So let's do that now. Okay, so what we did here, we imported use state function from React and we use it to initialize the text variable and use state inside of this functional component. And then we set the value for the text input to equal the text. And now we still need to add the onChange handler for the text input. And inside that handler, we actually want to call this set text function. So we can do that by adding an onChange handler here and directly here define a function that calls the set text. And we want to pass in the e.target.value as a parameter, like so. Okay, so now we have the text we want to translate stored in the text variable. So next we can add a onclick handler for the translate button and inside of it we will make the API request to the translation API. So I will define a on translate click function and for now I just console log and we still need to hook this function up to the translate button and we can do that with the on click attribute. Now let's save this and open up the browser and I will open up the dev tools and now when I type something in and click the translate we can see inside the console it logs the translate word and then the value of the text input okay so now let's take a look at the API we will be using to translate the text to Yoda so I will open up the browser and go to fonttranslations.com slash API slash Yoda and here is the API description as we can see, this is a public API, so we don't need to pass any API keys. And if we want to translate English to Yoda, we can just post to slash Yoda and give the text we want to translate as a parameter named text. And here is the full URL we want to post the text to. So that's pretty much all we have to know right now. I will switch back to the application and actually stop the server and we will use Axios to make the API requests. So I'll install that. Once it's run, I'll start up the development server again. And I'll switch back to the Visual Studio Code and let's import Axios. And then in the on translate click handler, let's make the API request. So first axis, then dot post, and then as a first parameter, we pass in the URL. So let's see what that was. It's right here. I'll copy paste it. And the reason, by the way, why we use the post request is because it said so in the documentation we should use post okay the URL is there and in the second parameter we want to pass in the data which in this case will be the text so text equals text and we can actually get rid of this second text because it's this is same as this like this then we want to catch the response. So we pass in a callback function that gets the response as 
a parameter and inside of here for now let's just log the response and in case we got some errors we want to catch them and again let's pass in a callback function and now it gets the error object as parameter and let's just also log it like this okay so now when we click the translate button we should initiate the api request to the api url with the text parameter and in case it's successful we will log the response and if we got some errors we will log them so let's save this and go to the browser and i have my network tab here open so we can see the request so i will type in some text and hit the translate and we can see that the request was initiated and when we click this we will go to the headers tab and see that the text parameter is there so that's fine but we get some course policy error to our console and this is actually a case if you are developing with create react app and calling different apis in your application this can happen so the fix for this is actually pretty simple so we actually want to take this base url or this uh, domain part of the url uh, let's copy it and then delete it from the access post call and let's go to the package.json file open it up and inside here let's add a new property called proxy and set the value as the url or the domain part of the url so now every request we make will be made to this url and then whatever we say in the access call will be appended right after this and this makes it so that the course policy error won't show up again so if we check the app component once one more time we have here the slash translate slash yoda dot json part of the url and if we save it and flip back to the browser and test it again to translate we actually get an error and if we see the request it's making the request to the localhost slash translate slash yoda url okay so we forgot to reboot our server whenever we make changes to the package.json file we need to reboot our server in order them to take effect so let's reboot the server and now try it again and hit the translate we can see that the request was successful and we get some data logged in the console and if we click the data open we can see that we get the translated text in the translated variable inside of data contents translated okay so now we want to show this text inside of the app right here so switch back to the visual studio code and we need a variable where we can store this text so let's add that and again we will use state for that and then inside here we want to save the translated text inside this yoda text variable so first let's get the translated text from the response and it was named translated and it was in the response.data.contents as we saw right here so data contents translated then let's set the yoda text variable with the set yoda text function like this now it saves the translate text inside this yoda text variable and now we still need to display the text so let's replace this with the yoda text variable save it and flip back to the browser and type something and hit the translate and we can see that we get the translation down here so that's it we have a working yoda translator application that uses react and the yoda translator api to translate the text Okay, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button below. I'll see you in the next video.